Hello guys, in this episode we talk about gears. Welcome to episode 31 of my photography Lightroom and Photoshop tips. My name is Serge Amélie, I'm a French photographer living in Paris and today we're going to talk about gears. And I'm going to give you my viewpoint of what has worked for me in terms of gears. This is only my point of view. You might have some other ideas about gears. This is what has worked for me. This was just a little note. So, to start off, let's talk about cameras. Now, cameras, I start photography about seven years ago with a Canon 350D. It's the equivalent today of the Canon 650D. And uh, it's, you know, it was, it's a good DSLR. And I've been using that for like two, three years. And then I got to the 5D and then 5D Mark II and I got to 7D. Now, just as a little note, to me, cameras, of course, are important. But uh, the funny thing is, for example, this photography I took with the Canon 350D. It's a black and white photo. And that photo is the one that has sold the more for the most money in terms of fine print. So, you know, high gear does not always mean high money for photography uh, because you can do so much with post processing that sometimes even a photo taken with a very cheap camera can come out and, uh, and have good quality. For example, this is the Canon uh, it's S90 power shoot. Now with this camera, I took that photo and this photo I also sold as a fine print for quite some money. So, and it's a pretty cheap camera. So again, uh, you know, the quality of the light, your ability to really see the scene and the way you post process it, that's what's going to make a difference. So anyway, when I went from the 350D, I went to the Canon 5D Mark I, which was the same than the Mark II, but without the videos. And I love the quality uh, of the photos and I did a lot of landscape with it. And then I went to the 5D Mark II because I was mostly interested with, with the video capabilities. And actually this video is being shot with the 5D Mark II. That's just when the Mark II came out about three, four years ago. And um, I've been using a lot that camera and I really liked it a lot. It's really the best camera I ever had. And I'll talk to you about the lens I've been using with it. Uh, I did a, a lot of short movies also using that, that camera. And I really like the video capabilities. I'm just a huge fan of that camera. But I like even more the 7D. Why do I like more the 7D? One, it's a lot cheaper than the 5D Mark II. And there is a lot of little uh, electronics, uh, little uh, things which I like about it. For example, you've got the levels, you know, electronically, you can make sure your camera is very straight. You've got more uh, autofocus points on the 7D. Uh, it's a lot faster camera. When I do, for example, sometimes I do um, HDR without a tripod, where I just program three bracketed photos. When I do it with the 5D Mark II, it goes like plum, plum, plum. With the 7 it goes It's a lot faster. It's about, I think, seven or eight minutes, eight image per second for the 7D and only three for the 5D Mark II. So it's two times faster. So really the 5D, the 7D is for me is better. The only problem is that it's not a full frame camera, which is not such a big deal, except that I specialize a lot or I used to specialize a lot in taking photos of hotels, for example, photos like that. And when I put a 1740, which is a very wide angle lens on the 5D, I'm fine. I can take this type of pictures. But when I put it on the 7D, it doesn't work anymore because it's, it's got this 1.5 crop factor. It doesn't have a full frame sensor. That's the only thing I don't like about the 7D. But apart from that, basically the way I rock today is that if I can shoot anything, I shoot it with a 7D. Uh, except when it's hotels rooms where I have to take the 5D. But I like so much more the 7D for the reason that I said, you know, the electronics, the AF point, the speed uh, of, the, of the camera is really a lot better. Also the slow motion in the video that you don't have on the 5D Mark II. So, and it's even cheaper. So 7D is really a must, unless you have to take really wide angle photos, then you got a problem. I never got to buy a lens like a 1022 to replace my 1740 to be able to go wide angle with a 70. I never do that. I never did that because I just use a 1740. So lenses. Now I have basically uh, three lenses that I use the most. Now you have to understand that I shoot landscapes 
I shoot interior design and I shoot a bit, but not very much, of portraits. My main lens that I've been using most of the time over the last years is this one that's on my 70. It's the 1740. Now, it only opens at f4 and it's a lot cheaper than the 1635, which opens at 2.8 that Canon uses. Uh, I never got to buy the 1635 because I was really happy with the 1740. I must admit that sometime when you are like uh, not at f7 or f8, you've got a bit of blur on the you know on the side of the photo on the borders sometime with that with that lens. But I do so much sharpening in Lightroom that I get that back. 90% uh, of the landscape and the interior design photo I've been using is with this lens. I took more than 100,000 photos with this lens. 1740 from Canon. That's my main lens. The second lens that I have is the 24-70-2.8, which I cannot show you because it's being used to record this video. It's a, it's a much more expensive lens, and um, I use it also a lot to detect photography. I like to detect panoramas with it. I like to do some portraits because it's open at 2.8, uh, but I don't use it that much. I don't use it as much as the 1740, because on landscape, I like to show a lot of the skies and the clouds, and often the 24, is not enough, I need to go 17. And interior design, I, I need to go 17 all the time. Just a little trick, when you use the 17, make sure that you are completely straight. Not like this, not tilt up, not tilt down, not like this, not like this, really straight, because when you do interior design or sometimes on landscape, you know, you're gonna get some really uh, wide angle problems if you are not straight. But even being straight, you will get distortion. So that's just a little notice. Then I have this lens uh, for portraits and for macro lens. It's a hundred, the 100 millimeter 2.8 uh, micro lens from Canon. Uh, I love this one too, and I only use it for macro, which I don't do that much, and portraits. So yeah, that's basically that. Um, the, I want to buy a 24, a 70 to 200 uh, f4 lens. Um, I was hesitating between the 24, the 70 to 200. Sorry f4 to 70 to 200 2.8 which is a lot more expensive and i tried both of them on the market and i didn't see such a difference so i think i'm going to go for the f4 version it's a lot cheaper than the 2.8 but basically that's it i do all my landscape all my interior design with these three lenses and i use this one about 80 percent of the time the 24 70 about 20 percent of the time and this not very often i must say it's just for portrait i don't do macro so much anymore uh, I also had a 50 millimeter um, 1.8, which is very cheap. It's a hundred dollar lens, which I love. I just broke it. It's not very strong, uh, but that's for a hundred dollars. Amazing to take like middle shot portrait or landscape or do panoramas. I love it. Uh, very, very good cheap. Uh, just a little about Prime. I don't use Prime. They are very expensive, but they are a lot better quality. I just never got to use them and to buy them. And one day when I get rich, I will buy some Prime. The, as I said, the only Prime I've been using was the fixed 50 millimeter 1.8, which is very cheap. But I've tried a few Primes and they're really awesome. I'm gonna try uh, the um, Tilt Shift Prime, the 17 and the 24 millimeter pretty soon to make landscape with Tilt Shift. Uh, very expensive lens. I don't know if I will buy one, but anyways, I've never used Primes. So that's one question that I get a lot. All my landscape has been done with the good old 7040 from Canon and a bit of the 2470. Okay. Okay, tripods. Uh, I often get this question if I shoot a lot with tripod. Yes, I shoot a lot with tripods. About 80% of what I do is with tripod. Why? Because I only shoot in the morning and I only shoot in the evening. And that's when there is not much light. And that's when you get long exposure and you need a tripod. So yes, I shoot mostly with a tripod. Why? Because I have a rule in life and that rule says that whatever scene you find, whatever monument, church, anything, it will always look nicer at the rising sun or at the sunset every time. Uh, it's, you know, there are some exception, exceptions, but you know, even a nice afternoon, it's always better at sunset, it's always better at sunrise. So, but there is less light, so tripods are needed. Now, I have been using a tripod which is a bit expensive, you know, it's a bit of luxury I did, and it's, um, so guys, so here's the tripod that I've been using for the last uh, five years. It's a Gizzo Mountaineer. It's very light wave. And uh, the way I work is that I, uh, I drive around Paris in my motorbike and I have this. Uh, that's why I bought this one because it was, uh, 
It was the smallest and lightest one that I could find about five, six years ago. It's pretty expensive. It's about $600. And this is a, a bowl head, a BH20 or 30 from Really White Stuff. Love this, 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 uh, this bowl head because you have this clamp here that goes with it. And you have this uh, L plate that you can put on your 5D. Or, uh, and the way it works is that you just, you just take your... Um, you know, you take your L plate and you put it, you clamp it, and it's it's very steady. And then you can release it, and you can put it this way, and you clamp it, and it's it's done. It's really cool. So this this part is Gizzo. This part is really right stuff. Uh, it's a bit expensive. If you're a bit short on money, I found an alternative which is really cool. It's a Manfrotto uh, 732CY. Uh, I'll try to put a link on the description. Well, this is a Gizzo ball head, which is a bit expensive with the same really right system, but you can put something else there. It's, um, it's actually not as light, but almost as light as the other one. It fits also in my motorbike because I want to have a tripod, which is very firm, taking very sharp photos, but very light because I, I shoot all the time with a tripod. So these are really the best two I have found. Okay, so filters. Um, I have been using a polarizer filter for a couple of years, but it broke and I never bought another one, uh, which is not good because polarizer is, is better to get a really a blue sky, but I must say with Lightroom 4, I don't really have a problem with my skies, so I don't use a polarizer. The only filters I really use are the ND400 or ND1000 filter. I spoke about that uh, in the past. This is an ND400 filter that I bought. I bought it very expensive, 250 euros. Uh, and then recently I found on eBay an ND1000 filter. It's, uh, the way it's made is, is not as good as the, nine, uh, the 400, but it was $30 and, uh, and it's a 1000. What they do is that they stop the light from coming into the camera so you can get long exposures and you get photos like this or like that. I love doing that and that's actually the only filters I use. Uh, I bought in the past some other filters that you can use which are pretty cheap, which are the, like graded filters. You see it's dark on the top and clear on the bottom that you can put with a special uh, thing. It's, it's, it's not very expensive and you get you know a nice sky, but uh, I'm a lazy guy. I never use them. That's the truth. Computers. I use an iMac 27 inch. Uh, it had four gigabytes when I bought it. I paid about 200 euros to get it to 16 gigabytes and that made a hell of a difference. So really go for the memory, that's very important. As far as the software goes, I just use Lightroom 4 mainly and a bit of Photoshop CS6. Sometimes if I really want to get the HDR look, I go with Photomatics or HDR RFX Pro. And the only other plugin that I really use is Nick Software Color FX Pro or Silver FX Pro, as you have seen on my tutorials. I have a second monitor, which is a very old and cheap one that I just use for the to put my windows, uh, so I can you know when I do video retouching or editing, or I have just the, the, the photo in big on that monitor and all the windows with um, you know the layers and the palettes and all that stuff on the left. Um, that's about it. I also use an Intuos uh, 4M, which is great, you know, with the, with the pen. I do it especially when I do like dodge and burning or uh, yeah, that's the main time I use. I don't use the, the pen when I, when I do Lightroom for retouching. I only use it for Photoshop CS6 where I need to do some, uh, you know, yeah, to light up something or to erase little spots. So I don't use it that often, but that's just me. Okay, I have a lot more gear, which is more studio gear. But that's about all what I want to talk to you today about the main gear I've been using. If you have any questions, just put them in a comment and I'll see if I can answer. If you've got to give some advice to other people, please leave comments on this video. And to finish off, I just want to present to you my latest training course. It's called Photoshop 66 Retouching. Here is some of the before and after that you will learn this course. It's uh, several projects where I show you how to retouch the photo in Camera Raw, and then how to finish it up in Photoshop CS6. Uh, all these photos are exclusive except the last tutorial which I've showed you with Lightroom 4, uh, which is this, this photo, the one on the, the digital blending. I show you on this training another way to do it using Camera Raw instead of Lightroom 4 and a bit of Photoshop. 
and all the other photos are completely exclusive. It's a $10 training, it's almost two hours, and you can buy it from this page of, on my website. Okay guys, as usual, if you can like, comment, and share that video, that'd be very nice, and I'll see you next week for another episode. Wow, 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 wow.